Hey guys, it's Adam here with Shield and Sword Academy. Hey, today I had a bit of a double feature for you guys. Uh, the first is going to be an installation and first impressions of the arc light rail system for the Tavor. The second is going to be an installation and also a first impression of the Power Attack Warrior Gen 2 flashlight. So as you guys see in front of you, this is my OD Green Tavor. Right here is the stock handguard. You can see the outline of where it installs at. So the first thing we need to do is remove that foreign. So let's go ahead, take this off. There's a screw here, and there's a screw on the opposite side in the same location, so right here. Now, I've kind of staged this a little bit, guys, so these were fully in, and it was to make this easier for me. Now, something to note with the foreign on the Tavor. There is a small tab located right here at the bottom. So what you need to do is you need to pull this down and then out towards the end of the barrel. So down and out. What that does is it saves you from breaking this tab right here. You can see how thin it is. That can snap. So next thing to look at is the Arclight rail system itself. Now when you order one of these, you have many options. This is the standard length, uh, which is almost mirrors exactly the foreign that I just took off. This one retails for $125, and it is just two ounces more than the standard handrail or the foreign, which is polymer. This is not polymer, obviously. Now, one thing to note about this is that if you want the ability to light a flash to install a flashlight and mount one underneath the barrel, which is what I wanted to do. That is more. So I paid $185 for the rail system, and it's called the fully loaded kit. So what that is, is I get the rail, and I get the light mounting kit, which is this, these two parts. I've installed this one already to make the video a little faster. And also, you get two rail sections, a long rail section and a short rail section. Sorry at the glare. Um, now, you do not get this pressure switch or this tail cap for a light. This is just already installed for light that we're going to talk about because it's going to make the video flow a little bit better. So what I did is I installed this bottom portion that holds the bottom of the flashlight. It's two Allen keys. The Allen keys do come with the kit, which comes in a box just like this from Manticore Arms. All right, so the first thing we have to do, though, is we have to mount the flashlight into this arc light rail system. So I told you I've already mounted this here. Let's get the flashlight out. The flashlight that we're talking about, again, is the PowerTac Warrior Gen 2. This is the box it comes with. Uh, I bought mine for just over $108 with two-day prime shipping on Amazon. It's one of the best deals I could find. I actually ordered the one that was 650 lumens, which was the Gen 1, because I only wanted 650, but I got the 850 version one, which, uh, you know, I don't mind. So, in the box, you get the flashlight, which I like so far. The bezel is rather large for me, but it works for what I need it for. And the important parts of this flashlight that you're going to have to notice are going to be this button right here, which cycles through your brightnesses, and this button right here, which actually turns the flashlight on. So let me tap this flashlight here. It's on. Now I can cycle through my brightnesses. So there, there, and let's go back to strobe, and then to the, this one. You can barely see anything. This is called the Firefly. It's only 7 lumens. It'll go for 60 hours. Then they have 83 lumens. I'll go through the uh, times these run as well in a second. 404 lumens, which is what we're going to leave this on for the Tavor. And then they have a little brighter, and then strobe. And the brightest one, which is also the strobe, is 850 lumens. I'm going to go through those in a second. Now... For the Tavor, I need to take this off and put it on the one that's already in there, the uh, pressure switch one. So I take this off. All right. And this is ran by two CR123 batteries. Uh, I'm going to get some of those rechargeable ones, but for now I've got these because they came with it. And let's mount it in here so we can get this out of the way. This is the pressure switch. Now, just like the the end cap I just took off there, this one also has the function to scroll through your settings. So we take this and screw this in here. There we go. 
All right, now for me, um, I don't really need a ton of lumens. I mean, I've shot in the dark before. I've shot in low light, no light, and you don't need that many lumens. So for me, I'm going to cycle through to the 404 lumens. The 83 is just a little bit too dim. Uh, 404 is a little bit too much, but it's what, it's what I'm going to settle with. So if I turn this on, that's that firefly. So one press gets me to 83. Two presses of this button right here gets me to the 404. That's where I'm going to leave it at. So now, every time this will continuously go back to the 404. If I decide I want to go to 850, there's 850. Now every time it will be at 850. And the way to know that is the next one is strobe. So I'm at strobe. There's the firefly. 83, 404. That's what I'm going to stay at. Now, one of the things I did for this arc light rail, just because I'm a little bit of a nervous Nelly here, I wanted this rubber switch to be down. That way I don't have to worry about it melting. If the barrel gets hot or something happens, I want it down. What I also do, I'm going to show you guys after I put it mounted in here, is I wrap this cord under the flashlight as much as I can to prevent it from getting near the barrel. So, let's get that down there as best as I can. Get it underneath there. And then the Arclight rail mount, this flashlight mount right here, it only holds a one inch in diameter flashlight. This is exactly one inch in diameter, which is pretty common for most flashlights. LZ, uh, you, most of the major companies do one inch around uh, at the grip portion. Now, when it comes to actually mounting this, you can only have a bezel that is 1.5 or smaller or it'll start hitting your barrel. This is 1.47 and when I show you guys, it is as close as it can get to not touching the barrel. So there is that switch. I'm gonna rotate that until it's right down at the bottom. Now, I need to take this and put it over top. Oops, did it backwards. Look at the camera. All right, so that's what it'll look like. Now, there are two Allen keys, one here and one there. And like I mentioned, it comes with the key set that you need. And the thing to watch out for with these is when you tighten them, make sure you tighten them equally or the flashlight will start to, uh, turn off the flashlight, but this mounting system will start to tilt, like you can see right here, because this one isn't done at all. If I tighten this one all the way down, you're gonna see it go like that, and this side will stick up higher. So you gotta be a little bit careful, keep your eye on it, and do your best to try to keep them consistent. And it's not very hard, but you know, it's just that little bit of extra patience, you know, a little bit of planning ahead of time, and just paying attention. All right. So, and I do crank this down guys as tight as I can get it because this flashlight, it is very close to the barrel. I am going to be using it and I don't want to have any chances of this thing starting to wiggle out. So that's pretty tight. It looks pretty even on both sides. So now I would always do see the flashlight, uh, that cord came out a little bit. So I just tuck it up underneath there again. All right. So nice and tight buttons facing down so just like before this tab it's going to go in then the, then the mount going up so in and sorry guys i'm going to show you this that's where that tab goes you can see there's actually a, a slit open for that tab so tab in push it up come back locks into place now as you guys can see with my barrel right there there is like no room between that flashlight and the uh, muzzle brake. I have Lantec Dragon on here right now. But it's enough to work with what I need it to. So now, just like before, these two screws go in. Again, be careful with these screws, guys. Um, I noticed mine, they go in at a weird angle sometimes, it feels like. I kind of do the same thing I do with the foreign. Where I kind of tighten it down a little bit on each side. And as you guys probably have seen, or you've noticed at least, um, the something to pay attention to when you put this light in is where you put this pressure switch. Um, the first time I did this light, I used both zip ties that this light came with. Or sorry, I think the Art Light Art Arc Light Rail actually came with these two zip ties. I used both of them. They're these tiny 10 centimeter ones, which I don't normally have at the house. I used both of them and I had to move it because I put it there. I went out to the range, shot a couple times and said, 
wow, definitely don't want it right where I had it. And what I had done was I had put this, I rode um, a little bit back this way so that I could kind of get my whole hand on there and it just didn't work. I needed it out here where I could just push down with my thumb because you can probably see there's three little knobs right there. That's where that actually activates. If I push in between them, it doesn't actually go off. You guys see the flashlight's not working. But if I push on this, flashlight ignites. So that's the installation on both of those. Now, as I mentioned, um, the flashlight, we're gonna do a quick little, you know, first impressions on it. I like it so far. Um, again, the bezel is huge. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I do like the flashlight in general. What do you get with the flashlight? You get a Kydex holster that I would not trust my life on. Um, it's nice they give it to you, but it's not something I'm necessarily going to use. I'll get this out of the way to make the screen a little bit easier to see. You get a lanyard. It's actually a very nice lanyard. I'll probably use it for some stuff for work. Um, it's got the little grasp like that. I really like that. You get an additional tail cap switch, which is this right here, you get an additional one, plus some O-rings. That's really nice. You get a belt clip, which I took off, otherwise I couldn't have got it in the uh, fore end here. You also get a Picatinny rail system mount for the light. So to me, I mean, this is an amazing deal um, on this flashlight. And from the reviews I've seen, it actually holds up pretty well. Um, they also have a, a no BS warranty where pretty much if anything happens to it, you send it in, you get a brand new one back. Or at least they fix that one. And I've heard quite a few people who've had stuff happen where they've broken it on their side. So they physically broke it on accident. They were given brand new ones, or at least it was repaired. That says a lot about the company. And they have a, uh, a battery container here. So you can put two extra batteries in here. It just holds them for you. So um, while none of this stuff is stuff I really need, it's nice that they give it to you because, you know, maybe one day I'm going to say, I don't want this rail anymore for some reason. Maybe they come with a new one that doesn't have this light here. I just want it. Well, maybe I'll put it up here on this rail system here and mount the light off to the side. I don't know. Uh, the Manticore Arms... Oh, sorry, uh, the PowerTech Warrior here, the one thing I wanted to go over with you guys is the run times for each setting. So, as you can see right here, these are the settings. Firefly, 7 lumens for 60 hours. Low, 83 lumens for 13 hours. Medium, 404 lumens for 2.5 hours. And then high is 850 lumens at 1.2 hours. Strobe is 850 at 2.4. Personally, I would really have liked a medium setting around 200 to 250. That's about the max I need. That it lights up the entire house if I bounce it off a, a white wall or a ceiling. 800 or sorry, 83 lumens was just a little bit too low for me, but I'm still going to mess with it and see if I can function with this because that 13 hour battery life is pretty awesome. Um, again, the power tack. So far, I've got to. I've gotten to use this stuff for maybe seven or eight range trips. Um, sorry, a little bit of focus there. I've got to use it for seven or eight range trips, ranging from moving and shooting to just shooting to prone shooting to a um, little bit of barrier shooting to pretty much everything. And I really like it. Uh, the fore end is really nice. It is a little strange going from this fore end that has this hand stop built into it to not having that anymore. But... The modularity of being able to mount a flashlight is, uh, sorry guys, I'm trying to not get this in the background. The ability to not have a flashlight out here making this gun wider than what it needs to be is something that I really, really like. Uh, I bought this gun because it's nice and compact, and this just adds to its compactness. Now, the one weird thing that you probably will see or notice is that if you do this, the light is throwing out here, which means it's not going to throw up because the barrel's in the way. At least in close to close quarters. My thought on this is, remember, this is up against your face. Um, so when it's throwing up, it's throwing above your head for the most part. At least in what I'm doing, I really don't need the ability to see above my head. Because um, I'm aim whatever I'm aiming at is probably what I'm shooting at. Uh, I'm not saying it's not a downside. But it's a sacrifice that I was willing to make to get the modularity of having a flashlight inside the forend. Um, the one thing that to notice that I've heard before when I kind of posted an original picture of this when I first got it is yes, this handguard does not exactly match the color of the OD Green Tavor. 
It is slightly lighter, I guess I would call it. Um, you guys can probably see that difference. That's not light, that's actually the difference in the color. Um, a lot of people think it's light bouncing off it, but it's not. It's actually a little bit lighter. I mean, this is the gun I'm going to use. So I'm not really concerned about how it looks. I'm concerned how it functions. So I really like it. I think the build quality is good so far. Um, I've bounced it around on the ground a couple times. It's still held up. The flashlight is held up too, which was really impressive because the flashlight was a, a very good price in my eyes. Um, but uh, that's about it for me, guys. Um, I just want to show you these two things and how you install it and uh, what you get that flashlight. A little bit of a double feature for you guys. Um, I hope if you have any questions, you send them to me. We are going to be doing, because I had just had a question yesterday, the update with this optic. This is the Hollow Sun uh, solar powered unit. The first one we had failed miserably after the first day. This one has now been on here for a month or so, I want to say, and holding up very well. Uh, we're going to do another water test again with it on video, just to show you guys that the, uh, the water is not ruining this one. So... I hope you guys are uh, excited to uh, see the Tavor. I know I am. I love shooting this thing. And if you guys have a Tavor, look up Manticore Arms. It's uh, M-A-N-T-I-C-O-R-E-A-R-M-S dot com. So manticorearms dot com. Uh, Sven, S-V-E-N, is the guy who you'll probably end up talking to if you call in or email. Sven's an awesome guy. We're going to try to set up an interview online uh, through Skype or some other sort, Google Hangouts. Uh, because I'd like for you guys to get to know Sven and his products. Uh, he does not only make things for the Tavor, he makes things for other rifles as well. So it's definitely a site to check out. And to me, this is, uh, in terms of Tavor, this is pretty revolutionary. Uh, it is awesome to have a light mounted underneath that barrel. Um, and when I say revolutionary for the Tavor, I just mean, you know, it's something new and it's great and I really like it. You know, I'm glad he, uh, he had the forethought to do this. Uh, just as that compact style of the Tavor. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'll do the best I can to answer them, or I will get Sven to answer some questions for you guys if you have any about it. And uh, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're still doing that 1,000 subscriber giveaway. We are also uh, on Instagram at Adam underscore S-A-S-A, and Facebook at Shield Sword Academy. So again, guys, share this video with your friends. Let them know about Manticore Arms, and uh, let me know any additional questions you guys have. All right, see you guys later.